If protecting our native species is to truly succeed, we must celebrate and support the people and communities behind their conservation. Nowhere is this more evident than for one of Queensland's most enduring and inspirational conservation projects. For over 50 years, the struggle to save one of our largest and rarest marsupials has largely gone unnoticed, until now. With strong digging paws, a backward facing pouch and a life spent mostly underground, this secretive but powerful mammal still has much to teach us. This is the story of the northern hairy nosed wombat. I'm Dr. Alan Horsett. I work for the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service Threatened Species Unit. We're here at Epping Forest National Park, the home of the critically endangered northern hairy nosed wombat. I'd like to tell you some more about this amazing species. The northern hairy nosed wombat is one of three wombat species in Australia, and it is an enormous animal. The largest we've ever caught was 39.9 kilos, and they are a bundle of muscle. Their forearms are digging machines, their back feet pushing the dirt. Northern hairy nosed wombats breed mostly in the wet season in Queensland, which is November to March. And the reason for that is it's a 12 month cycle until young start eating their own grass. As in any species, young can't stay with mum forever. We think it's the females that leave the burrow, the young females. The males stay in the area that their mother lives in. The northern hairy nosed wombat is a grazer, which means it eats grass, almost 100% grass. Grass has high silicon content, and a great adaptation the northern hairy nosed wombat has is continuously growing teeth. Unlike kangaroos that produce four molars over their life, and when their last molar is worn down, they can't eat anymore, they can't digest their food. Wombat's teeth grow continuously, and that's another reason why they can live a long time. The burrow is another reason why wombats live a long time. They can sleep 18 hours a day down that burrow, and they sleep on their back and they snore just like humans. We've studied the microenvironment of the wombat burrows, and on a 42 degree day, which is quite common out here in the summer, the temperature doesn't get much above 28 degrees. On a cold winter's morning, it probably got down to maybe 12 or 14 degrees. So it provides a buffer against the extremes. Radio tracking studies of the Northern Hairy Nose Wombat have shown that they occupy several burrows, maybe four or five, but they have one main burrow that they prefer to live down. Of course, another major adaptation of most Australian mammals is being nocturnal. Prior to European arrival in Australia, the Northern Hairy Nose Wombat occurred from the Victorian New South Wales border right through an inland belt up to inland of Townsville, so a huge range. However, we think they were probably always fairly thinly distributed, and that relates to their habitat. They live in very deep sandy soils which are laid down by river systems. There has to be the right amount of clay to bind that sand together so you can dig a burrow that doesn't collapse and there has to be, most importantly, a year-round food supply. So there's plenty of sand around, but if you haven't got food all year round and you're an animal that's tied to your burrow, you can't live there. The northern hairy nosed wombat is unusual in that we've only got three locations where it's ever been collected. So although we are pretty sure of the range it had, um, we only have three definitive specimens and they've been collected from the Riverina district of New South Wales, from around the St George uh, area, the Mooney area of southern Queensland, and right here in Epping Forest National Park. The northern hairy nosed wombat is listed as critically endangered internationally in Australia and in Queensland. It's got serious threats and they need to be addressed. The major threat really is the low numbers and the fact that they're mostly all in one population. We've got to spread this species out across Queensland and into its former range as quickly as we can. In the time that I've been here, we've had a major predation event where wild dogs killed up to 20 of them and as a result of that we built the predator fence and we've seen a big increase in numbers and a big improvement since then. We think that would have been a natural thing in the past but when you have a small population confined to a small area you, you have to control that. Of course cattle and sheep and, and competition with domestic animals was the reason the population declined and that will always be an issue uh, when we consider where we're going to move wombats and in what sort of environment. Most of the time we think that wombats could have coexisted with cattle and sheep but drought is such a common occurrence out this way that sooner or later a drought would come along and when there's no food and you're tied to your burrow and you can't wander big distances like cattle and sheep and kangaroos can do, you're doomed. So from a species that occurred the length almost of a continent, contracted down to one small place in central Queensland, Epping Forest Station, it was in those days, 
and the national park that they live on here now is 3,000 hectares. It's a tiny area for a species to survive and it's about as close as you can get to extinction. The national park is not open to the public, it's a restricted access. We need to keep disease out of here, we need to keep new weeds, anything like that that could change the environment and change the chances of the species surviving. Fire is also a major threat here and it's complicated by the fact that we have an introduced grass that's slowly but surely taking over much of the native grasses on the park. It's called buffalo grass. It comes from Africa and it grows very thick and very vigorous and it has a huge fuel load. We're pretty confident that fire wouldn't be a direct threat to the species and the animals. They would survive down their burrows during a fire. It's the aftermath of the fire when they would come out and there's no food around. And the fire could actually wipe out many of the species that they rely on to burrow and if they don't have bohinia trees and vine trees and Morton Bay ash to bar under with the root structure to hold the soil together then the whole system could start to collapse. Hi my name's Neil Gathercole, I work for the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service and I'm the ranger in charge of Epping Forest National Park and we're here today at the Claremont Workbase. Queensland Parks and Wildlife Services manages the remote work base at Epping Forest National Park and maintains vital infrastructure to keep the park functioning. Routine maintenance of fences, roads and fire breaks, implementation of fire regimes, weed management and maintaining water levels are all part of our responsibilities. Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service provides the platform and management tools so that caretakers can carry out their daily duties. Volunteers are the keystone to operations who graciously give their time to this project. Epping could not function without their input and we are so fortunate to have dedicated people on which to draw upon and we can't thank them enough. Volunteers are out there 365 days of the year in the cold and heat ensuring wombats have access to clean, fresh water and monitor the predator exclusion fence daily. My hopes for Epping in the future is strengthening relationships with key stakeholders and securing funding to help conserve the northern hairy nose wombat. To reduce the risk and start the process of saving this species, in 2009 and 10 we established another population near St George. It's called Richard Underwood Nature Refuge and we moved 15 wombats down there. But we learned an enormous amount by doing that. We had to develop a technique of constructing artificial burrows. We had significant monitoring occurring to make sure that they were going well. And all those things that we learnt there, we're going to be applying in the next two or three years, we hope, to establishing more populations. I'm Craig Strubwick. I'm the Community Relations Manager for Glencore's Coal Assets in Australia. My responsibilities in the business are to understand the needs and, and aspirations of the communities where we operate. I've been in this role now for ten and a half years. The partnership with Queensland Department of Environment Science on the Northern Hairy Nose Wombat outdates me. It's been around longer than me. We first partnered with them in 2008. We gave a significant amount of money to help set up the first relocation sites at Richard Underwood Nature Reserve. Since we made that significant contribution back then, we've continued to collaborate and work with the team there at DES to understand what's needed for this project and to continue to support and invest in different things. For example, one of our latest things is we've invested in a communications tower and that helps things like maintaining safety and being able to communicate with all the volunteers and staff at Epping Forest National Park, as well as to enable telemetry for things like trapping and monitoring of the wombats, which is a really important step forward in being able to understand better, get real-time data and support the program. The team at the Threatened Species Unit at DES uh, are in for the long haul and, and so are we. You know, we've been around um, in this program since 2008. Alan Horsop's been in for 30 years. The, the park's been there for 50 years. You know, it's a long-term investment and we're excited to see this next step, the second relocation site for the wombats. Hopefully it can be secured soon and you know, we'll be very interested in um, seeing how we can contribute to that next stage in this very important species recovery. G'day, my name is Eddie Underwood and together with my wife Gab and I, we run a beef cattle place in southern Queensland called Yarran Downs and it is roughly 3,500 hectares. We heard that National Parks were doing soil testing and searching for a site to establish a second colony of northern hairy nose wombats and we were happy to be involved in preserving a species that once lived in the area. We'd always wanted to preserve this part of our property in its original state and establish the nature refuge in memory of our son Richard. 
The preparation of the refuge was overseen by National Parks. Our main involvement was in the erecting of the predator-proof fence with the help of volunteers. The caretakers are volunteers and integral to the maintenance of the enclosure and ensuring the wombats are safe. And without them, this really wouldn't happen. This project has shown that it is possible to establish further colonies of wombats and, and increase their population. It's good to know that our future generations will have the pleasure of seeing these animals in the area again. We hope this project can be replicated again and perhaps include other species. It's been a good experience and we have met many great people along the way. Hi, I'm Dr Andrew Biggs. I'm a soil scientist in the Department of Resources in the Queensland Government. Over a decade ago, staff from the Threatened Species Group came to me to try and locate the best soils for the northern hairy nose wombat. As part of trying to identify potential habitat areas, we've undertaken a variety of different approaches. We've used desktop assessments, ecological modelling and other tools to identify initial areas to investigate. We prioritise those and then we go out and look at them in detail. We've done more than 100 reconnaissance investigations of over 20 sites. As part of all of that, we've found some areas that we think were historical habitat for northern hairy-nosed wombats, and that's allowed us to refine our understanding of what the best habitat areas might look like. Hopefully our work of the last decade has identified some potential habitat sites, and one day I'll be able to revisit those areas and see northern hairy-nosed wombats established in them. Hello, my name is Leanne Brosnan. I'm one of the directors of the Wombat Foundation. The Wombat Foundation was established in 2004. I first became involved with the Northern Hairy Nose Wombat in the 1990s in Fallon in Western Queensland. Originally, the range of the Northern Hairy Nose Wombat ran straight through Fallon. In 1900, one of the local landholders, who was an amateur naturalist, decided to send some specimens of the Northern Hairy Nose Wombat to the Queensland Museum. It was the same species of wombat. And that's where Fallon's historical connection to the species comes from. In 2016, I became a director of the Wombat Foundation and in 2017, William the Wombat found his home in Fallon. He is a giant Northern Hairy Nose Wombat. William's designed to share Fallon's historical connection with the species. If people want to help, they can jump on the Wombat Foundation's website, they can donate funds, they can support us during Hairy Nose Day on May 11th every year to spread the word and help continue to bring this incredible animal back from the brink. One of the most heartwarming parts of being a director of the Wombat Foundation is the stories of people that have reached out to us to try and help northern hairy nose wombats. Most recently we had a wonderful letter from a very proud dad introducing us to his beautiful daughter Winnie. She had made northern hairy nose wombat rocks for 12 months to raise funds and um, they gave us a donation of $200. My name is Winnie, I'm four years old and I wanted to help these hairy nosed wombats because they're clearly in danger and they live so close to us and we love them and um, we really wanted to help them so we could um, raise money for the animals. To survive, every threatened species needs a champion and I have no doubt that Dr Alan Horsop is the champion of northern hairy nose wombats. Without his dedication and hard work over the past 30 years, I'm sure the species wouldn't have survived. From only 35 individuals left in the 1980s when conservation efforts began, the northern hairy nose wombat population has increased to around 315. I believe northern hairy nose wombats would be a perfect mascot for the 2032 Olympic Games in Brisbane because more than any other species, they exemplify winning against all odds. People might ask, would we miss the northern hairy nose wombat? And I would say absolutely, it's a, an ecosystem engineer who creates habitat for many species on the park here. You can stand at a burrow entrance and in the bank above you'll see small holes and they're the nests of partilodes and red-back kingfishers. We often see black-headed pythons in the entrance of the burrow, so they live down there. I'm pretty confident that every burrow has an echidna in it. We see those on camera quite often. We see sand swimmers and all kinds of lizards, crickets. Wallabies will seek shelter in the entrance of the burrow on hot summer days, and they turn over the soil and create new habitat around their burrows. They're a pretty important part of the environment. I feel incredibly privileged to be able to work on this species, to be part of a team that's been working on them for 50 years here. I guess what I've found is that one person cannot save a species. Probably 
For the first 12 or 15 years, I was working on the wombat by myself. We had lots of problems. We had droughts, we had predation. We struggled to fit the numbers to increase, but when things started to wind up and we had other parties joining, we had other staff members, we had the Wombat Foundation, Glencore come on board, it really started to pick up and we're, where we are now with 300 plus animals, the prospect of some new sites very soon. I think the key there is that it's a team effort and that's how we're going to save the species and it's a model for other species. You cannot do this on your own, we need to work together. So I'm very optimistic that the Northern Hairy Nose Wombat is going to go forward in leaps and bounds. It's an age old saying, coined by Baba Diom, that says, in the end we will conserve only what we love, love only what we understand, and understand only that which we are taught. The story of the northern hairy-nosed wombat is one that will stand the test of time as a benchmark for the future, showing that with patience, partnership and know-how, we can secure a future for our most threatened species.